Alofa. My name is Chief Cielo Mabea, and I come from the islands of Samoa. I was born and raised in the village of Nalepa on the islands of Savai. Samoa is beautiful. Lush and green rainforest, volcanic islands surrounded with cold and white sandy beaches. But most importantly is the beauty of the people. The people of Samoa are known as the happy people of Polynesia. I left Samoa to come to Hawaii to attend the Brigham Young University of Hawaii campus. And here I am working at the Polynesian Culture Center where this beautiful setting is located. This is the island of Samoa where we share with people from all over the world the culture and customs of our people. So come, come and meet the happy people of my island. The islands of Samoa are divided into two countries, American Samoa, which is still known as the Trust Territory of the United States of America, and Western Samoa was under the British colony and it became independent in 1962. These are the two flags that represent the two nations. But even though we're divided, but we still have the same culture and we speak the same language. Talofa, and welcome to our Tunoa. This is where we prepare the food for the family. So come with me as we share with you how we prepare the food. And this is how we prepare taro and breadfruit. Clean them up by using the coconut shells, we call this asi. This is the balusawa. Daily work in the islands, preparing the food for the family and for the chief. And make sure we have enough breadfruits and taro. And sometimes we cook yams and tapioca, green bananas. Sometimes we compete uh, uh, which families is going to eat first. So it all depends on how fast you move and on the preparations of all these things. Yeah. You move slow, your family eat last. And this is how they look, already cleaned and ready to be cooked. And now we're going to show you how we prepare the umu. Build the fire and heat the rocks and get ready to cook. First of all, you have to use the small sticks first. They're ready and dry, so when you put them in, they will start burning. And then, you add on the, the bigger woods. That This will really help to burn and heat up the rocks. How are you? you? And now we're ready to put on the rocks. The river rocks are the best ones to use when you cook. It will take about 45 minutes to an hour to heat these rocks before they're ready. And now the rocks are heated. Sometimes when you use brand new rocks, they can explode. So you have to watch out. Don't sit next to the oil when you heat new rocks. And for all the things that we cook today, my favorite is fish and chicken. You can boil them, you can bake them, but today we're going to show you how we cook them in the omu. We wrap them with banana leaves and coconut leaves. As we get ready to wrap the fruit, prepare some of these leaves. Okay. Yeah, you put the coconut leaf down, cover with the banana leaf. And then you place the fish right in here and then braid it. 
As you can see, that most of the people they use foil, tin foil, and those. Some more we don't need all those things. We can just use the leaves as you braid it like this. We use the coconut leaf. It will help to protect the fish so you won't fall apart when it's cooked. It's almost just about ready, but we have to prepare the palusami. This is our main dish. We have some banana leaves, fresh taro leaves, breadfruit leaves, and coconut milk. Yeah, of course we need some onions to make it taste better. So we get the great mix here. Wrapping is very important so the milk won't come out. So when you prepare these taro leaves, make sure you place them in a way that uh, it will help to protect the milk inside. So it all depends when you have, a, if you use a lot of taro leaves, you put more milk. If you use less leaves, then you put less milk inside. It will always have to balance so it, when it's cooked. And lastly, you uh, covered it with the breadfruit leaves. You know when you wrap these with banana leaves, breadfruit leaves, when it's cooked, it tastes much better than if you use anything else. And here we have it, palusami. As we say, the men prepare the food for the family. Now you see the reason why, because there's a lot of hard work. As you level the rocks in the ground, you'll always have to remove the small ones in the center and the big ones outside. Because later on, after you put the food in the ground on those hot rocks, then we put the bigger ones on top of the food. We dust it with banana leaves. And sometimes when you cook a pig or a turkey, you will have to use some of these hot rocks to put inside so it will be cooked well. And now we start putting the hotter and the bigger rocks on top of the food. And that way the food will be cooked well. Now it all depends on how hot the rocks are. Sometimes maybe 30 minutes, like today, the rocks are very, very hot, so it's going to take less time. But if the rocks are not very, very hot, then it will take a longer time. And now we're going to bring the banana leaves, the banana leaves that we always use to cover the whole oven, the whole umu. So we must use a lot of leaves to keep the heat inside. And there you have it. All you have to do now is sit back, relax, and wait until the food is ready, and enjoy the meal. And now that we have enjoyed our Samoan food, I would like to invite you to our village demonstrations to learn how to start fire and make coconut milk. Welcome to the islands of Samoa. We greet you by saying, Talofa. Talofa. Please try it one more time. Talofa. Talofa. OK. Somebody said Toyota. <laughs> That's not right. It's Talofa. We welcome you to the islands. Welcome to the Polynesian Culture Center, ladies and gentlemen. Mulatu from Malumbra, from Talofa, to Pimula, to Mamla, from Maimu, Tala, Amaita, to Vivi, Vatasis, Matu, Fiel, Matu, Samoa. Okay? 
that means welcome. <laughs> we have our own language, we speak Samoan. We have seven different islands in the Polynesian culture center. We also have seven different cultures and seven different languages. So we don't understand each other. <laughs> That's why we have to speak English. <laughs> so if you have any questions, talk to me. Because all of us who work here, we're all from Samoa. And I see some friends from Japan here today. Japanese, where are you? Yeah, there they are. Konnichiwa. Yeah, Korea. Annyeonghaseyo. Anybody not from Korea or Japan? <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs> there's a lot to do and there's a lot to see. Samoa is still controlled by chiefs. Chiefs make the rules and they tell you what to do, so whatever they say, we do it. So it's good to be chief. <laughs> the people of Samoa are known as the happy people of Polynesia. So ladies and gentlemen, we are the happy people. <laughs> So please be happy. Are you happy? Yeah. Me too. <laughs> Japanese, are you happy? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Japanese. Uh -huh. <laughs> How many of you here that have been to Samoa? Anybody have been to our country? No. You, you've been there, sir. What part? Okay. <laughs> That's the airport. <laughs> Give him a hand, everybody. He went to the islands and visited Pango Pango in American Samoa. Everything is still the same in the islands. When you look over here, you see these open houses. In Samoa, we can build as many as we want because we don't need permits. We also grow our own food. We don't pay tax. <laughs> We're the happy people. <laughs> if you have no place to stay, this is yours. If you want to meet the chief, look, look for the big one. If you want to see the family, there's a family hut to my left. When you're hungry, we have the pizza hut. That's the cooking place. It belongs to the men. In Samoa, we men do the cooking. Ladies don't cook in Samoa. It's still part of the culture. Do you like that, ladies? And please move to Samoa. Because we men are moving out. Every day we cook. We use the crown oven. Climb trees, get coconuts. Make fire by rubbing sticks. Every day. That's why I ran away. Come here to get more education. Someday I'll go back and change it. Take a microwave oven. <laughs> I want to share with you one of the most important part of cooking today. We're going to learn how to start the fire. A method that our people use in many, many years. To start the fire, we just rub sticks. So that's all we're going to do. Rub sticks. So while you flick your big one. We rough our sticks. Very simple, it takes about five and a half hours. So. Let's get going. Oh, man. <laughs> this is how we do it. We rough sticks all day long. On rainy days, we don't eat. <laughs> then we go to McDonald's. <laughs> I hate this job. <laughs> Are you making movies? <laughs> okay. <laughs> And make sure you see the movies. It's called the Making Fire. <laughs> Did you see the smoke? Did you see the smoke? Yeah. Uh, that's fire. Do you want to see a big fire? Yeah. Let me go get some gasoline. Look for some dry and flammable material. Can use papers and leaves. I'm using the dry coconut husk. We call it pulu. Everybody, please say pulu. 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 Okay. You can transfer the burning particles to the pulu. Ooh. 
holy smoke. <laughs> Do you want to see flames? Five dollars. <laughs> Everybody, please say fire. fire! Japanese heat. Heat. <laughs> <laughs> <In> Japanese. <laughs> Korea. Boom. 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 That pool is hot. You want to see how we put it out? Okay. <laughs> I'll send it to the cooking place. <laughs> so don't worry. Move. That's okay. Sit down. Sit down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so anybody can do this. You can start the fire anytime because any wood works. Make sure the wood is dry and your two pieces come from the same tree, all right? Do you know the name of this wood? No? Firewood. <laughs> it works. It's a good wood. It's a wild hibiscus wood. You guys go home, you can use any wood. There's pine wood. There's so many different woods. So you can use all of them, okay? There's redwood, oak wood. Japanese use plywood. Anybody here from California? Yeah. Go home and use Hollywood. <laughs> so please. Thank you. Try the method. Rub sticks it works. You can do it too. Oh yeah. <laughs> Anybody missed the coconut cracking demonstration? Have you seen that? No. You want to see it? Yeah. Do you want to see it? Yeah. How about the tree climbing? Yeah. You want to see that too? Yeah. All right. <laughs> We're the happy people. So we'll do it. All you need is a coconut. Look for the ripe ones. This coconut is ripe, you can tell by its color. It will turn brown like me when it's ripe. It tells me that some of you are not ripe yet. <laughs> That's a joke. Husk your coconut using this opted. We call it mele. Say it. Mele. Come on, everybody. Mele. mele. In English, sharp stick. Sharp stick. <laughs> Japanese, bo. I thought you were over there, and now you're over here. Bo! Bo! Korea! Makchenggi! Makchenggi! Put it down here. First thing to do is kill the coconut. Second, push it down. Ow. Be careful. And push it down. Just follow two steps like this. Keep moving until this coconut is completely us. Awesome. I was doing that in slow motion for your convenience. In Samoa, this is one of the competitive sports record for the men, three seconds. Ladies, two days. <laughs> That's why we cook. <laughs> but I'll show you how to crack this in two pieces instead of thousands of million pieces. We look for the two eyes from up to the nose right here. We locate the line that runs between the eyes because that's the softest spot. All you do is get a hard optic and hit right across that line. You can use hammers and knives, screwdrivers, and dynamite. In Samoa, we use our foreheads. <laughs> you don't believe me, do you? <laughs> Close your eyes. <laughs> He's going. Huh? Anybody try to crack coconuts before? What, what did he use? Machetes, hammers. What did he use, lady? A rock? Did it work? How many pieces did you get? Lots of pieces. <laughs> as long as it worked, it's all right. Where are you from? California. California? Uh, that's what I thought. <laughs> lady from Canada told me that she put a coconut in the ground and ran it over with a lawn and more. <laughs> Young man from Texas put his 45 and shot thing between the eyes <laughs> while his mother-in-law was holding the <laughs> coconut. I'll show you something. Go home and try this. Get a several rock. Everybody, please say, small rock. Japanese, ishi. Yeah, ishi. Korea, don't make me. Now look for the line. But don't come out in two pieces, don't play in me. I'm a salmon. This is Hawaiian coconut. <laughs> Made in Japan. <laughs> That's a joke, okay? <laughs> Japanese, huh? Are you ready? Are you ready? 
you remember what I told you, you'll be all right. All you do is hit across that line, and you know what? You get two pieces. So. <clears throat> you crack your coconut, drink the chews, it's good. We call it 7-Up because there's no caffeine. Never had it. Never. <laughs> this is my show, okay? <laughs> Since you helped me, I'll give you some chews. Come here, sweetie. Come here. Come here. All right, you come on in the front here. Just try to see if you like it. It's fresh juice. Do I have to? You have to now. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Drink it. I really like it. Drink the whole thing. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Thank you for bringing the juice. <laughs> Uh, Japanese, Japanese, come and have some juice. Japanese, Japanese, hurry up, go to say, hurry up, so. So, konnichiwa. Yeah, ここで注射美味しいですね。Something there. You speak English. I do. Oh, very good. Have some more. <laughs> Keep drinking. Tomorrow morning you're gonna turn brown like me. <laughs> so you'll be alright. <laughs> you'll get used to it. You'll get used to it, okay? Now, pick it up. Pick it up. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Give a hand for our lovely lady from Japan. All the way from Japan, ladies and gentlemen. Now we're gonna soften the meat. Milk is still here. We have to get some shredded coconuts. We can use coconut shells or the seashells, the sharp rocks. Or oh, whatever. All I want to do is just get some more coconuts down. Okay. So we'll soften the meat. <coughs> huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Rain. Yeah, rain. Yeah. Rain drops. <laughs> so we'll soften the meat like this. Sing. Okay. <laughs> you guys have been here before, huh? <laughs> That's the right song. Everybody please sing together. Jingle bells, sing. Laura. Oh. Now, oh, oh. <clears throat> sing. And the Koreans are not singing. Korea, sing jingle bells in your language. Ready? Sing. That's not your language. Okay. Learn your language. Ready? Sing. Yep. Ah. Yeah. Faster. Oh, man. Yeah. Don't stop. Keep singing. Sing any songs you know. That's all we do. We clean them up. We save these coconut shells. And then we pull out these fibers, the inner fibers from the coconut husk. We can use it to gather the meat like this. We can roll them up and squeeze it to get milk. Everybody please say, milk. Yeah. Japanese, miruku. <laughs> Korea, uyu. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is how we milk the coconut. <laughs> please don't go home and milk your cow the same way. You'll make them cry all day long. <laughs> but I think it's good I made it, so it's got to be good. You never know <laughs> unless you try. Lady? <clears throat> Get up and have some milk. Just taste it, see if it's OK. It's fresh milk. <laughs> I hope you like it, because I, I never tried before. <laughs> OK. And now we'd like to give you some we have some souvenirs for you. Give you a nice headband for being good sports. How about that, huh? It's yours. You can take it home. <laughs> no problem. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll wash it. This flower is yours. Remember this. Anytime you pick a flower and put it in your right ear, I want you to know that it means you're single, available, or free. If you put it in your left ear, you're taken, married, or stuck. In the middle means you don't know whether you're coming or going. <laughs> Are you married or single? Um, not single, but not married. 
not single and not married. <laughs> Where do you want me to put your flower? And the left? Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there you go. And I'm going to take a picture with you. How about that? Come on up here. Take a look at this handsome guy right there. <laughs> this is your picture to take home. So you pick this up before the show tonight, okay? Yep. And who else? Was, oh, Japanese, this is yours. Come on down. Married or single? I'm single. You're single? Yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I'm <a single. laughs> My lucky day. <laughs> oh, -ho! <laughs> Come on down here, sweetie. There you go. Thank you. And we'll get your picture too, all right? Okay. Smile. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who else was up here? There was someone else that was up here. Oh, there you are. Married or single? Accepting applications. Accepting applications? <laughs> For how long? <laughs> You're married? Yeah, okay. Deciding. Yes. Okay. It's all right. <laughs> Shh! Don't <laughs> stop it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're not dancing right now. <laughs> okay. Go. On. Yeah, and here's your picture. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> huh? Okay. Thank you very much. Who's this? Also. Okay. <laughs> Cameraman? Korea, <laughs> this is yours. Yeah. Yeah, buddy, 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 wow. Okay. Ah, Korean Japanese, okay? Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Korean Japanese? Oh, yes. Okay, you get mixed up. Okay. Yeah, yeah, hear me? You don't worry about it, it's okay. Mm -hmm. That's not real. This is real, I made it. Okay. Married, okay? Jingo, okay? Okay. Oh. Yeah, and how about a picture? One up right here. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the camera, okay? <laughs> okay, come Samira. Come Samira, I don't want to say, uh. Are you happy? Yeah. Do you want more? Yeah. How many of you here that want to see the tree climbing? Anybody want to see the tree climbing? Uh, not enough for the demonstration. We need five more people. Raise your hands again. That's too many. This is difficult to do. Tree climbing is very dangerous. Most of our climbers are not here anymore because <laughs> last month was very windy. So please put your hands together. Join me and give a hand for my friend, for Mia, and of course, Siyoshi will be coming up. Push him up, let's go, hey, ha! Here we go. Come on, don't stop. Make him move up. Go oh. 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 go get it. <laughs> Follow the boy. Three climbers, Balamia and Siyoshi from Samoa, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.
the tattoo, or as we say in Samoa, the tatau, is a very important part of my culture. Tatau comes from the word tata, means to mark on, to tap on twice or hit twice, which refer to the tapping of the instrument to the body. Several hundred years ago in the heart of Polynesia, two women swam across the Pacific from Fiji to deliver a message. This message carried the knowledge of an art. Originally this art was to be expressed by the women. Somehow when the message was delivered it was reversed and given to the men. For three centuries the knowledge of the tatau or the tattoo as it has been translated has been passed from generations to generations in Samoa. A young man who is tattooed is called a songaimiti, meaning someone who is open-minded, alert and vigorous in all functions of the culture, and plays an important role in his family and in support of the community, especially the chief's council. Today the tattoo is still an important part of the culture. It is a sign of strength, beauty and pride. It shows endurance, determination, and dedication. It is a symbol of authority among the community. When I found favor with my family and they made me chief, I was encouraged by the high chief of my family to have the tattoo put on me. I accepted the challenge and I've never had a moment of regret. The tattoo is a symbol of my love for my culture and no matter where I travel in this world, it is always a reminder to me of the importance of retaining one's cultural identity. Just roll it real slow like this, okay? Because right now you're working with your wrist. Another part of the Samoan culture that has become a favorite okay. of mine is what we call the Siva Nufa'oti, the dance of the Stop. tooth of death, better known as the fire knife dance. First dance in Samoa in the last century, the fire knife dance has become a symbol of the strength and power inherent in our culture. It is a display of discipline and danger that challenges us to overcome the obstacles of life. In 1993, I won the first World Fire Knife Dance Championship. And here you see part of that performance. For the past five years at the Polynesian Cultural Center, I have performed the fire knife dance as part of our evening show, Mana, the spirit of our people. Join me now as we catch this live performance. And don't get too close to the TV or you might get burned.
It's been a long day, and there's so much to see. The Polynesian Culture Center is the only place where you can see all of Polynesia all in one place. You can enjoy our world of New Zealand, Fiji, Hawaii, Marquesas, Tahiti, Tonga, and of course, my lovely islands of Samoa. So come, bring your whole family, bring all your friends, and enjoy our world of Polynesia. Until we meet again, thank you. Do fasai for. Ah.